Hey guys, I'm here to show you guys how to achieve this comic effect here. Uh, I achieved this in my recent game jam entry, uh, the uh, the rescue of Fluffington. And so I'm going to show you guys how to go from a unity scene to this. And it's actually very easy. So uh, first of all, we're going to go into our editor here. And the first, the very first thing we're going to do is I go into my uh, render pipeline asset. That, that is currently active in my graphics, and I set the render scale to 2. This ensures that we have a large resolution photo, and that on top of that, the edges aren't as pixelated, and we're given just overall better quality. And I'll kind of show you guys the effects of that at, at, uh, here in a second. So once you have your scene created, I have one of my main bad guys escorting a kid through this dark alleyway. It's very odd. He's holding a little, like a toy gun. It's Yeah, I just threw it. To, uh, together. The first thing I'm going to do after this, of course, is create a camera. And hit enter. Now, my camera, I want to position it however I want, obviously. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to align my scene view with how I want my frame to look. So, I want it to, to be at the uh, end of the staircase here, staring up at them. So, I'm going to be about right here. I'm going to click on my camera here, game object, align with the view. I'm going to go into my game view here, and this is our current um, scene. I'm going to punch in a tiny bit on him, and then I'm going to move the X value a tiny bit up, move the Y value a little bit over, and I'm going to do a rotation to make it more dramatic, a Dutch effect here. Let's rotate that, and there we go. This is our this is our frame that I want to use. So. Um, if your camera is near your uh, talent, what you'll see is that it starts to clip into their uh, mesh, and that is because your near plane is at 0.3. An example of this is if I duplicate my camera, disable it, Oop, uh -huh. and then I, let's say I wanted it to be like right here, facing down, right? Game object aligned with view here. You'll see that we get this here, which is not cool. So we just set near, we drag it all the way down to 0 0.01, and there we go. And so, from here, let's go to the main camera here. What we do from here is we have our frame set up. Uh, I like to add post-processing, so I just check that, and I set the anti-aliasing to sub-pixel, SMAA, and I keep it at high. I go ahead, I scroll down, add component, we're going to do a volume. And in here, I use, I already have a profile set up here, but you can feel free to create your own. This main volume, which is essentially just high bloom, and I set the saturation very high and did some small shadow correction. And I think it looks pretty nice. So from here, we are ready to screenshot it and put it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into my, into my game view, uh, shift space to make it full screen. And I'm noticing it's a little bit off. I'm going to be picky here. Sorry. There we go. That's a little better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load my snipping tool up, and you see I already kind of have it screenshotted here. So I'm going to hit New. It's going to do this. I'm going to click in the top left corner of my game view. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned, just enough to where you can get not the edges in. And I'm going to clip it. And here we are. Here's my scene in snipping tool. And we are ready to put it into our painting, into our uh, photo editing software. So personally, I use paint.net. Uh, you guys might use a different software, and that's okay. Uh, I'm going to use terms that will apply throughout each software, so you should be good. So first, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go into my uh, photo editing tool. I'm going to go New, and then I'm going to keep the dimensions here. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to Control-V, paste it. Here we have our scene that we just made. Now, the very first step to all this is we want to duplicate the base layer of this photo. I'm going to duplicate it. And then for this layer, I'm just going to call this comic effect. And I'm going to set the opacity to 119. That's a fine tuned value that I've discovered over time. I'm going to set the blend mode to overlay and hit OK. Now everything got super dark. Don't worry. That's going to get fixed once we apply the comic effect, which is the next step. So. First of all, I'm going to set my color primary to be white and my secondary color to be black. And I'll explain why here in a second. 
Um, important to note that the effect that I use is called halftone, and that is a global um, that is a global term for it. It is called a halftone effect, which creates these dots over your screen. And it uses the dots by making the dots, the actual dot parts, your secondary color, and the fill space, your primary color. And if I were to disable this, you would see just that, how it does it like so. Now, my rule of thumb here is, it, is if it's a super bright scene, I will actually set my primary color to black and my secondary to white. And I repeat the halftone, and you'll see here that it makes it dark. But if your scene is super bright, this will be a good uh, replacement. But in this case, this is a pretty dark scene, so I'm going to set my primary to white, secondary to black, effects, stylize, halftone. And we have just achieved the first part of our comic look. Now, personally, I think this is a really good look on its own. I don't think you need to touch it any more beyond this. I think another uh, good touch you could do is on your base layer here, on my background here. I can do adjustments, posterize. And this will allow me to get more of like a uh, lower color count, which I think adds a lot to it. Now, you obviously don't want to go too low here, but I, I would say about like 32 is like nice. And again, that on its own adds a lot. But for the sake of showing you how I got this in particular, I'm going to skip that. So what I do next is I go to Effects, Artistic, and Ink Sketch. I'm pretty sure a lot of photo editing softwares have this effect, but if not, then I'm sure you could find some way to replicate it. But here, I don't like how this looks, to be honest. I'm going to tune it a tiny bit. Um, I, want, I want it to be too dark. I think that's about nice. Uh, I always keep the coloring to max if you're using paint.net, just to kind of keep that saturation up. And OK. So now we have this frame done, and this is where I go on to the second part, which is text. So I'm going to create another layer uh, sandwiched in between our comic effect and our base one. And on layer three, I'm going to create a new text. I'm going to make uh, us hear his footsteps. And for showcase of how I do dramatic text, I'll put a big um, crash in the corner. So I'm going to set my primary color to this yellow swatch I have saved. And here I'm going to say tip or tip tap tip tap. I'm going to set the scale to 25. And note, I use Comic Sans because I think that's the most true font to a comic style. I keep it bold and italic by preference. You are free to do whatever you want because it's your creation. <laughs> and so here, after I make my text, I'm going to select it. I'm going to rotate it a little bit to add um, sense of direction of where his foot is. And I'm going to create another text. I'm going to say this to be tap, exclamation mark. But I'm going to make this a little bit larger to make it feel closer to the camera. I'm going to put that right here. Highlight it, Control X, Control V, rotate it a little bit, and bam. Now, an issue here is we see this text, and it doesn't really pop out. It takes your eyes a second to kind of see it. So I'm going to adjust this really fast. So the very first solution is to outline it. Now, I have a little effect here called Outline. And if we do that, that's a lot better. But let's say it's not it's not dramatic enough, or I want it to look more stylized. The best thing to do is to, on top of an outline effect, you do a drop shadow here. Now, this is obviously way out of tune. Let's put the distance down a little bit. Tip tap. And now it's kind of popping out of the picture. And I think that looks very, very nice. But in this case, I'm going to keep it without a drop shadow, because I think that looks fine. But now let's add the big dramatic text of saying crash. Um, an example of this I can show you guys really fast is I have this right here with this kapow. Whenever he gets hit by the weapon he threw. Uh, this text here, how I did this was I created, let me close this. I went into my effects. I have a, a circle text plugin by DPY. And also to note, the if you're using paint.net, the halftone effect is by Ed Harvey. I'll put the link in the description, but it'll be right here. You'll simply download his uh, his effects pack and put it into your effects folder in your paint.net directory. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to create a circle text right here, 
and I actually already have it here where it says boom I have it all tweaked to where it works correctly but I want to say crash I think that's perfect and there we go I'm gonna set the font size to be a bit bigger and then we're gonna make the radius more let's drop it down even more um, angle of start let's rotate it a bit so it fits this is kind of where it gets a little bit tricky because um, you're having to like adjust this a lot and try not to get it off screen while keeping it. So I think I'm going to make the font a little bit smaller, change the radius to bring it in a bit, and there we go. I think that's nice. There we go. I'm going to hit OK. Now, I don't want to do it in this color here, so I'm going to Control Z. And I'm going to change my color to like a red, about like that tone there. I'm going to Effects, repeat it. And we have it now in red. Now again, same problem. It does not pop out at all, and it's not dramatic enough. It's not dramatic enough, and it kind of blends in. So, the way I fix this one is we have three options. We either outline it, which I will show you that on its own, like that. We can make it a little bit bold. Um, that will work sometimes. I, that just doesn't feel dramatic enough to me. I could affect object drop shadow it and change the angle to be like that way, make it farther out. That looks, I like that. But I feel like it could be better. So what I do is I do a, uh, the best of both worlds here and outline it. I make the width very small, about three. And I go to object to drop shadow. And I do that. Now I actually think that three is too small. Let's, let's do eight. Eight is nice, and then effect, object, drop shadow. And there we go, we have this dramatic and very flashy crash. And of course, uh, the best thing you could ever do is make an explosion um, sprite in the background of this. So how I do that is I make it red with, I believe an orange interior, I might have it the other way around, but let's just see, new and improved. Uh, let's do that so that we have the red outline and the orange inside. There we go. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to center it right there. And there we go. We have just we have just made our comic strip. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to control shift F to merge all of our layers down into one uh, picture. So the next step here is I'm going to make a border to our um, comic here. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to go to my select tool. I'm going to click because I had a little thing selected here to make it empty. I'm going to duplicate this, or no, sorry. I'm going to add another layer above it. Rectangle tool, shape, uh, no fill at all, just outline. I'm going to set the, the color to complete white, except, sorry, not complete white. I'm going to set the V to, uh, I think, about 75. And then from here, I can outline the whole comic in white. And I'm going to adjust this here to fit the edges. And bam. We have that now. And now I can merge this. And we have just created our comic strip. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you. And have a good day.